Madeline and the Old House in Paris. Story and Pictures by John Bemelmans Marciano. Madeline and the Old House in Paris. Story and Pictures by John Bemelmans Marciano. In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines lived twelve little girls in two straight lines. In another old house that stood next door lived the son of the Spanish ambassador. One afternoon at a quarter to five, a long black car pulled into the drive. Wondering who it could possibly be, Pepito and Madeline ran to see. It was Lord QQ Face, the sometimes cruel and always nosy head of school. He had come to make a surprise inspection. Nothing escaped his skills of detection, save a certain little mouse who also occupied the house. You can't be too careful with these old houses, full as they are of termites and louses. Then Lord Cuckoo Face came before a thoroughly unfamiliar door and asked Miss Clavel what it was for. Dear sir, it leads up to the attic said Miss Clavel, her voice emphatic. A room that I believe is haunted. Rubbish, the Lord said, and completely undaunted. And climbed to an attic that was hot and musty, and filled with old chests that were really quite dusty. There are spiders, you see, but nary a ghost. But what's this? he said. Why, this is the most... Splendid telescope I've ever the pleasure of coming across. Oh, what a treasure! QQ Face rubbed his hands greedily and made off with it speedily. After that, they broke their bread and brushed their teeth and went to bed. In the middle of the night, Madeline said, Something is not right. She heard the sound of someone moaning, almost like a ghost was groaning. The girls all cried, Look, a ghoul! But Madeline was not a fool. That's no goblin, she said. It's only a brat. The boy burst out laughing. Oh, that bad hat! But the moans went on. In fact, they got stronger. Not even Pepito could laugh any longer. Madeline went off investigating, while the others, afraid, were hesitating. They crept up the stairs. Was it a mouse, a bat, or something much scarier than any of that? It was a ghost, he cried. Woo-hoo! The girls and Pepito cried, boo-hoo! But Madeline just said, poo-poo! The ghost broke down and started crying. Oh, this is even worse than dying. Madeline offered him a handkerchief to stem his flowing ghostly grief. 
but his tears fell right on through monsieur ghost please tell us do what it is that's troubling you my name is felix de la mort and i was born the scientific sort already by the age of seven i had mastered the study of the stars in heaven proud i was and very glad to be the first boy admitted to the academy now comes the woeful part of my story i built this house as an observatory to witness a comet that only nears the earth every two hundred and twenty-one years just as my comet moved into view i leapt for joy what is sad but true is that i forgot i was sitting on a roof and my life was over just like that poof i have haunted this house for years without cease awaiting the comet so i may rest in peace to-morrow night it finally returns you see but alas my telescope has been stolen from me madeline said how unfair how unjust we will get it back for you we must using a wig these clothes and even this dust the plan began the very next night when miss clavel turned out the light madeline said the coast is clear and gave pepito the sign to near two girls held a mirror steady while the rest helped get the costumes ready they used a jacket and a scarf of lace and a piled up wig and a powdered face plus a pair of breeches colored blue and a buckled high-heeled shoe or two they biked to a boat that was waiting below and rode their way to this chateau oh wake awake lord cuckoo face and save yourself from foul disgrace you've crossed a line that's awfully fine by taking what is rightly mine the telescope that now i lack i order you to give me back poor qq face his jaw gone slack and halfway to a heart attack cried have mercy on a poor old fool i was only borrowing it from the school it's by the window don't you see just take it please and leave me be the children seized their prize and then rode their way home up the Seine. Felix was waiting, anxious and glum. Wouldn't the children ever come? The door swung open. To reveal to his joy the safe return of his best-loved toy, Felix thanked them with all his heart, and now begins our final part. While the rest of the world was soundly sleeping, a girl and a boy and a ghost were peeping at a rare and brilliant sight, a comet streaking through the night.